make sure your boat is pointed directly into the wind. Place the dagger board in the cockpit. To attach the rudder, slide the tiller underneath the traveler before using the spring pin to attach the rudder to the gudgeon, the metal bracket. Make sure it's securely fastened. Place your sail bag on the deck of the boat on the port side. Place it so that the gooseneck is toward the front of the boat. Remove the mast and the spars from the bag. Store the bag until after you're finished sailing. Check that the gooseneck is located near the mast step, which is the hole that the mast fits into. Check all the lines to make sure everything is untangled. Attach the halyard to the mast by passing it through the gins, or the loop of rope, at the top of the mast. Using a gins rig depowers the sail, so it's great for beginning sailors. Pass the halyard through the gins so that it is traveling toward you. Pull several feet of halyard through the gins. Check that the gooseneck is aligned with the mast step. Now place the base of the mast through the loop of the gooseneck and all the way down into the mast step. Place your PFD under the front corner or tack of the sail to protect the deck from rubbing. To raise the sail, pull the halyard. Grasp the boom or lower spar to give the sail a boost. Raise the sail as high as you can. If there's still an inch or two of halyard left between the upper spar and the mast, don't worry, you'll tighten that in the next step. Now you'll tie a trucker's hitch about two feet above the deck. Grasp the halyard in your non-dominant hand. Take the loose end of the line, or the working part, and loop it around the taut part of the line, called the standing part. Pull the loop through. Keeping a grip of the halyard at or above the loop, pass the tail of the halyard from front to back through the bullseye. Pass the tail through the loop of the trucker's hitch and pull it all the way through. This extra purchase will allow you to pull the sail all the way up. Boost the lower spar to help the gooseneck slide up the mast. When the sail is fully raised, there will be no halyard visible between the upper spar and the mast. Pass the tail of the halyard through the bullseye from front to back and secure it to the deck cleat by using a cleat hitch. Make sure your halyard is snug and hasn't slipped. You'll wrap once around the base of the cleat and then in a figure eight pattern. Make a loop over one horn of the cleat so the loose end is secure. Now move to the port side of the boat to adjust the gooseneck. Open the lever of the gooseneck adjuster and slide the spar to the desired position. Set to a higher number in windy conditions and a lower number in light air. Tighten and then close the lever securely. Before the next step, you'll need to make sure that the halyard hasn't slipped. If it has, just snug it up and retie your cleat hitch. To set the vang, pass the tail of the halyard through the bullseye from back to front and pull it all the way through. Next, pass the line between the mast and the sail so that it lays on top of the gooseneck. Pass the tail of the halyard through the bullseye for the final time from front to back. Pull the halyard all the way through and snug it up with one hand while pressing down on the lower spar with your other hand. To secure, tie another cleat hitch right over the first one. The vang keeps the boom in the correct position by preventing the gooseneck from riding up the mast. Next, rig the main sheet, which is the line you'll use to control the sail. Start by tying a loop around the traveler using a bowline knot. A bowline is very secure but easy to untie when you need to. Pass the line under the traveler and make a loop on the opposite side from the tail. Pass the tail up through the loop, around the rope, and back down through the loop. The loop around the traveler should be about two to three inches in diameter. Now take the free end of the main sheet and pass it through the two boom blocks or small pulleys and the two main sheet keepers, the fabric loops. Feed the end of the main sheet into the ratchet block. If you've fed the line into the block in the correct direction, you'll hear the sound of the ratchet mechanism as you pull the line through. 
reverse the direction if you need to. If you don't hear the ratchet in either direction, make sure the switch on the side of the block is in the on position. Finish rigging the main sheet by tying a stopper knot to prevent the main sheet from coming out of the block accidentally. To tie this figure eight stopper knot, hold the main sheet about six inches from the end. Take the tail over and then behind the rope and feed it back down through the loop you're holding. Pull it tightly to secure. Stretch the bungee around the boomerang shaped splash rail, also called the combing. Align the clear plastic tubing with the dagger board trunk, the elongated hole that holds the dagger board. Attach the tail end of the halyard to the hole in the front edge of the dagger board. The front edge is straight and not curved and thicker than the back edge. Pass the tail of the halyard through the hole in the dagger board and tie a bowl in. Make a loop opposite the tail, pass the tail up through the loop, around the back of the rope, and back down through the loop. Pull to secure. And return the dagger board to the cockpit. To attach a tow line, sometimes called a painter, pass one end of your line through the bow handle and tie a loop around the mast. Make the loop large enough that you can easily attach another boat's tow line in the event that multiple boats need to be towed at once. Tie a bowl in by bringing the tail around the mast, making a loop opposite the tail, and putting the tail up through the loop, around the rope, and back down through the loop. Make sure your line is free of tangles and stow it neatly under the elastic band around the combing. There are additional sail controls located on the boom. The Cunningham or downhaul is shown here in green and the outhaul in yellow. The Cunningham is attached just above the tack or the front corner of the sail. It controls the tension of the luff, the sail's front edge. The outhaul is attached to the clue, the sail's back corner, and tensions the foot or the bottom edge of the sail. Tightening the Cunningham will cause the control line to pull downward on the grommet, increasing the tension on the luff. Tightening the outhaul will cause the clue to be pulled further back along the boom, tensioning the foot and flattening the sail. Before you launch, make sure you have your sponge, paddle, and water bottle. Don't forget your gloves and of course your PFD. Thank you.